thanks dear viewers for joining us on this edition of the 6 p.m primetime newscast on equinox television live from my headquarters in cameroon's economic capture Douala. i am Bablet jonathan in our top stories in this edition of the news the united states of america expresses deep concerns again over the situation of children in the crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the republic of cameroon according to the united states of america 600,000 children have not been able to attend school since 2016 when the crisis started and the political transition struggle initiated by the Stand Up for Cameroon Civil Society platform and the Cameroon People's Party, the CPP, gains momentum across the country. According to the national president of the CPP, Kabanwala Edith, followership of the political transition struggle is increasing significantly every day. Those were top stories. Thanks, dear viewers, for joining us. The United States of America has once again expressed its deep concerns on the situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon, the socio-political tensions that has been pulling on, that have been pulling on for close to three years today, according to the United Nations or the United States of America, over 600,000 children have not been able to attend school since uh, 2016 when the crisis uh, started in the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. We have details with for me, Armstrong Sander. In the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon remains one of the major global concerns of the United States of America. This revolution was made by Ambassador Chirit Norman Charlotte, acting deputy permanent representative of the United States of America's mission to the United Nations. In his remarks at a United Nations Security Council briefing on children and armed conflict, Ambassador Norman said the United States of America is deeply concerned that at least 600,000 children in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon have not been able to safely attend schools for more than three years. A disturbing situation which, according to the United States diplomat, is a stark reminder that mediation requires follow-through to prevent children from once again falling prey to deadly cycles of violence. The United States representative says the United Nations Security Council has a duty to speak on behalf of these children, over 600,000 of them in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon, and even go further to take meaningful actions. According to the United Nations, some 250 million youths live in countries affected by fighting where worsening hostilities incite grave violations against them to SAR. The institution has announced the launch of a new practical guidance for mediators that consider children's needs and rights during all phases of conflict. Sander reporting there and the Cameroon People's Party, the CPP and the Stand Up for Cameroon Civil Society platform thinks that the only solution to the current crisis uh, in uh, Cameroon is a political uh, transition and of course the political transition struggle initiated by those two organizations has been gaining steam across the country and Edith Kabangwala, national president of the CPP, says that the followership of the move is increasing by the day. Take a listen. Of what we mean by political transition is increasing very well and uh, we are getting more and more Cameroonians who understand that it is not only about saying that the regime is not good. We are agreed the regime is not good. It is not only about saying that the regime must go. We are agreed the regime must go. But what we build after that, we must have the opportunity to put all our problems on the table. The problems that are facing Cameroonians every day, poverty, electricity, uh, water and so on, these are political problems. These are problems that have to do with the form of the state. These are problems that have to do with how the state relates to 
its citizens. And this is what we must discuss during this real national dialogue during political transition. It is from there that we will understand how should we organize ourselves as Cameroons? How do we organize ourselves to respect our different identities, Anglophone, Francophone, Northerner, Southerner, and all of the rest? And when we have been able to define this within political transition, then we reform institutions and carry out elections. Edith Kabangwala, national president of the CPP, says that the fact that many Cameroonians stayed at home on election day and did not go to the polling stations to vote is a strong political statement. is an indication that Cameroonians are fed up with what's been happening in the country for some years now. Take a listen. The turnout of the population in Cameroon in general and that of the Northwest and Southwest regions in particular during the 9th February 2023 election was top on the agenda at a press briefing granted by Stand Up for Cameroon, a civil society organization. We are so happy to see Cameroonians understanding it was very, very important to say no to the elections on the 9th of February. They said this no and they expressed it by staying away from the polls. Registered voters, 70% of them did not go out to vote, meaning that they were not in agreement with these uh, elections organized at this time on the blood of our brothers and sisters in the Northwest and Southwest regions. According to the members of Stand Up for Cameroon, the non-participation of a majority of those who were supposed to vote at the plane station on election day was a strong indication that a majority of Cameroonians are tired of being fooled by the authorities in power. It's a political statement. It means that we are no longer going to be accomplices to people who are putting us in dire conditions and to people who are responsible for the deaths and the suffering that we are seeing in the Northwest and the Southwest regions today. Apart from the elections during the press briefing granted by Stand Up for Cameroon, they also talked about the brutal bloodshed still taking place in the Northwest and Southwest regions. Stand Up for Cameroon say they will continue the fight until change is effected in Cameroon. And to the president of the Popular Action Party, Denis Jang, the low participation rate in the February 9 municipal and legislative elections in Cameroon is an indication that Cameroonians have started understanding that no credible election can take place in the country with the present electoral code, with the present uh, system in place, and of course with the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Listen to Denis Jang in this extract. Elections organized under this present regime with the poor electoral code and the post-electoral post crisis will only legitimize Mr. Bia um, and his regime because um, we have realized that for the past um, years or the electoral years, there, have been, there has never been a credible election organ or, or organized under the regime of Mr. Bia. And um, I think um, Cameroonians today, um, in majority of their numbers, have now proven us right. Because if we look at the, 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 the rate at which the, 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 the absentee rate, the rate at which people uh, boycotted the election, we realize that it is about 70% boycott or above. Because there are other groups that are talking of 28, others talk about 23. In fact, from my observation, I think the rate of participation is not even up to 30. I think Cameroonians have actually understood that um, we need to sit down as, uh, as Cameroonians and see how we can uh, work our heads together to ensure that this regime liberate Cameroonians from the, the hostage in which Cameroonians have been. 
However, to the government and the election organizing a body, the elections, the municipal and legislative elections of February 9, 2020, uh, took place in a transparent, free, and a fair atmosphere. And there was a massive turnout, according to the Minister of Territorial Administration, uh, Tanganji Paul, across the country. And of course, uh, according to the government, uh, the there is an indication that the Cameroonians boycotted the call for boycott by some political parties, notably the Cameroon Renaissance uh, Movement political party and other parties like the CPP and the PAP that stood for no elections in Cameroon. And uh, from March 3rd, 2020, government delegates to urban uh, city councils across the country will be replaced with uh, city mayors. And this information is contained in a circular of the Minister of Decentralization and Local Development. And the city mayors will be elected by municipal councillors. Details with Innocent Azim. City mayors will be elected two weeks from now to take over cities run by government delegates, implying appellation of government delegates will disappear in Cameroon. According to a circular of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development, this exercise shall be coordinated by newly elected municipal councillors in all councils of the town. To be a candidate for the city mayor, the release indicates you must have been previously designated mayor of your municipality. Once obtained a favorable vote, the victorious candidate automatically gives up his council duties to assume the position of city mayor. The release also states that newly elected councillors and mayors shall have the accession of right on February 18th and February 25th as per the date. Results of the February 9th twin elections were proclaimed. The George Elanga Obam communique instructs senior divisional officers to make follow-up arrangements and ensure good progress of the first session of the Municipal Council for the second Tuesday following the proclamation of the election results of Municipal Councillors in accordance with the Article 199 Sub 1 of Law No. 2019-024 of December 24, 2019 relating to the General Court of Decentralized Territorial Communities essentially devoted to election of the mayors and his deputies. Likewise, to allow harmonious consultation of municipal councils of cities. The date of the election of city mayors and their assistance is scheduled for the 3rd of March 2020. Meantime, the first session of the city council devoted to setting up committees will be convened on March 10, 2020. Tens of thousands of women are still at risk of the devastating consequences of female genital mutilation in some African countries and the European Parliament is calling for urgent action against the practice Katsi Euronews. Too many girls and women are still victims of female genital mutilation or FGM. They're cut with a simple blade without anesthetic in a violent ritual often performed in childhood. Kadi Koita considers herself as a survivor. Originally from Senegal and having suffered from FGM, she now campaigns to ban the practice. I decided to campaign against female genital mutilation because in the 80s in France, exactly in 1982, there were so many deaths. One three-month-old little girl died from hemorrhage after the amputation. This was very traumatic to me. The UN estimates that there are 600,000 victims of FGM living in the EU alone, and 180,000 girls are at risk. Goita tours schools to raise awareness about the issue. After our speech, there were some girls who wanted to share their personal experiences and ask, can you help us? 
because they heard their parents planning a trip to Africa and saying, we are planning a party for you during the holidays. In Belgium, there's a hospital where women can get help, from psychological support to surgical reconstruction. Dr. Kaya explains the consequences of the different kinds of amputations. For women whose clitoris has been cut, it can cause pain, and there are also small tumors which can develop from the nerve of the clitoris, which are very, very painful. For women who have been sewn, we talk then about infibulation, another type of genital mutilation. They just have a few millimeters hole for the flow of menstrual blood and urine, and obviously it makes sexual relations extremely complicated. The issue has been taken up by the European Parliament. On Wednesday, MEPs approved a new resolution to put an end to female genital mutilation and to provide care for survivors. And that is adopted. We need political leaders to take this more seriously as the dreadful crime that it is and the life-changing effect that it has on, on the women. The resolution calls on member states to encourage third countries to ban FGM. If nothing changes, 68 million more girls will be at risk by 2030. Joanna Gill, Euronews. And we wrap up the first part of this newscast with an advertorial on the Queen Yekers Nursery and Kindergarten Academic Complex in Bona Musadi Dwala 5 subdivision. The institution was presented to parents recently. Details in the upcoming report. Described by parents as heaven for children, Queen Yekers Unrivaled in Bona Musadi Dwala 5 subdivision offers an unrivaled nursery and kindergarten. With a European standard infrastructure, Queen Yekos Unrivaled received keys from six months to three years, grouped in three levels. The idea came from a need, the vision actually, I call it a vision, not an idea. It came from a need. My baby was six months old when we came into the country and there was actually no school for a six month old baby. So every school rejected my child because she was too young at the time. And me being a working mother and my husband as well works at the bank. Two working parents absent most of the time. I didn't know what to do with my child, my six month old baby. And that's how this whole vision came about. To bridge a gap. Comprising a kitchen, a study room, music hall, a refectory, dormitory, a pediatrician's hall and different sporting units. I want to say that when I was coming here, I did not expect to see what I've seen here today. It is out of place. The structures are impeccable. From every age, there's age one, there's level one, there's level two, there's level three, there's a uh, you know, there's a playroom, there's a music room, there's everything you can think of. This is home. The programs are touchable. The programs are impeccable. I've seen the programs. Any child who comes here, that child is going to be an exemplary child. That child is going to be an orator. That child is going to be developed in all aspects. That child will have the art of public speaking. That child will know how to relate with each other. That child will fear God. That child will grow up physically and spiritually to be a, 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 a future leader of Cameroon. With an able staff of God-fearing caretakers to train security guards, Queen Yekel stands tallest in the city of Douala. What I've seen here today, I've not seen in any place in Douala. I think it's, it's out of place. And I want to believe in the next one or two years, the population here will outgrow the structures. It is fantastic. I invite parents, I invite parents in and out of Douala to come and discover this place because it is a place that is none like other. I mean, it is heaven for children. No child will come here and want to go back home. The doors of Queen Yeager's unrivaled kindergarten are open to parents and kids every day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Talking Point is up next.
We're receiving one of the leading politicians from the northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. He's a member of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM, political party, and a lead of uh, Donga Mantum uh, in the northwest region of the country. And he will be parliamentarian from Donga Mantum Center constituency. Galajera, you're welcome. Thank you, Babila. Thanks for having me again after the campaign period. So, back to Duala. After a tough three weeks in uh, Kambe, in the Ndonga Mantum Division, and the rest of the country with the campaigns and the elections. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, I would say, busy and uh, tiring two weeks. I had to spend with the electorate, uh, spend some time with them despite the fact that we were standing on a post, but being someone from the grassroots, I have to spend time with my people and uh, do what I normally do best, commune with them and stay together with them in peace, which was very important. You would understand that as somebody who was standing on post, on a post, I did one of the best campaigns in the two in this region of Cameroon. So that's just evident that I'm a grassroots politician. I'm somebody who is close to the people. Would I wish I'll have stayed in Douala and still win elections? All right, before we proceed <coughs> further to talk about the uh, elections, uh, you were attacked on your way back to Douala. Where did uh, this attack take place and what happened? Well, uh, Babla, you would understand that there are a lot of rumors, and I travel to Kambe every time to Rokumbu every time and I will do so because when people fake out news just to call the attention of others for whatever reasons I don't understand but <clears throat> if they call such things attacks then I wonder where, what we are doing because why what? would somebody somebody attack me? What was it? Why would somebody attack me in the first place? What have I done wrong? Is it because I advocated for school resumption? Is it because I advocated for peace? Is that the reason why somebody should attack me? I mean if it was true what was it? What was it? Uh, For me, I don't look at it as an attack because it's like a child, somebody driving, passing by, and the child takes a stone and throw at your car. And what next? I'm here doing fine. My driver is doing fine. So what? What do you? How do you call that? It's a child's play. That was not an attack. So nobody attacked me. Was it actually a stone or popcorn, as they call it? Eh? But, but when you only feel an impact, if it, if, if it depends on the impact, then you know that it was an attack. But I didn't feel any impact, so I don't call it an attack. Let's get things very clear. Because, yeah, because, let's let's yeah. get things very clear. Uh, what happened? What happened? But, but, but you would have to understand. Some people are saying that I escaped dead. Do you know what? They are calling all in Galajira. We traveled from Kambe, eight of us, eight people, with, more, with top authorities, and we arrived in Bamila safely. But why are they only calling Galajira? We were in the same vehicle. I will arrive safely in, Ka in Baminda. Not only me, not Galajira alone. Eight top people with two parliamentarians plus Galajira. And everybody is talking about Galajira. So you should know that it's a fake story. Because I traveled from Kambe to Baminda with eight people in a car. Arrived in Baminda very safely. So why are they talking about Galajira? How do, how do you want to believe something yes, like that? Yes, you are live, uh, Bamenda. And you, 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 let me tell you and, something. And, and you are here with us today. It's a proof. It's enough proof that uh, <laughs> you, you, you were not harmed. But we want to know what exactly happened. Was it a stone throw, as you said? Well, well, uh, well you, will ha you have to judge it. You have to judge it from my appearance here and what I'm telling you. That I didn't travel alone. I traveled with eight people and we arrived in Bamenda safely. And the only name they are calling is Galajirat, meaning that somebody planned something evil to spread out falsely to the entire Facebook family because they are like, like, they, like you know, their family is Facebook because they are never on the ground so that people could believe and think that something serious happened. You understand? And let me tell you, even if somebody was to plan something against me, only God alone gives life and only God takes life. And if something were to happen to me, that would be the decision of God. And God has given me the strength to create more Gala Gerards in Kambe. Those children I'm advocating to go to school are the Gala Gerard I'm creating. Those children I'm fighting for to be in peace, to attend schools, universities, those I'm sponsoring, those are the Gala Gerard I'm creating. If God decided somebody should take that, my life should be taken. That's his decision because he knows that I've created more Gala Gerard that will be able to create more wealth 
in Kambe. They will be able to advocate for more peace in Kambe. They will be able to provide grains and farm meat to women in the local community. Then where is the problem? He gave me life and he got this. Not a human being will do that. When you see people in Kambe coming out in numbers and participating in peace project in, 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 in 11 February in election, is it by, by power? No. That's inspiration from God and that's the strength of God. Why do you think a normal human being will take my life? How would that be possible? Do I have the strength? Do I have the strength to, to do what is happening in Kambe? Do you, do you, do you think that's from my powers? No, those were powers from God. And right, I don't believe that. that a human being would do evil to me when I have only good intentions for the people. All right. Apart from what happened, which you will say that it was a child's play, uh, even though you have not told us what actually happened, um, whether they were just told, told that were thrown on I've your bed. You I've told you that it's a or? fake story to like those who are in complacency with the amber people to, to attack sympathy. You understand? It's a fake story that they want to just know that something happened in Galajirat. But my question is, those who are happy with the fact that something happened in Galajirat, for what reason? I told you I'm an Anglophone, English-speaking Cameroonian. I, def I help or assist most Anglophones that were detained in this course in prisons, more than most of them. I work on their behalf more than most of them. I know there is an Anglophone problem from day one. But that doesn't stop me from getting children to school. We cannot use children as tools to achieve political goals. It doesn't work anywhere in the world. These children have been at school, uh, out of school for more than four years. Let me tell you an example. And the U.S. Let me, let me, let me, let let me finish. last outing indicated that there were 600,000 children who uh, have not been able to oh, go to school. Yeah, 600,000 who have not been able to go to school, and you think you attract sympathy from the U.S., they will never sympathize with you because they know what they are doing to those children. Not, nobody in the world does that. No country. That is what I'm trying to make my brothers to understand. I don't hate the Eric Tatos, the Mark Baratas. I don't hate them. Tapa, I don't hate them. They may, they, they, they may hate me for whatever it is. I don't care, but I don't hate them. They're my brothers. But what I'm telling you is that let's use, a different, let's use different tactics to achieve our goal. We had a problem, yes, we had an Anglophone problem. And I believed very well that we had an Anglophone problem. Let's use a different way. We should be intelligent. Let's be intelligent to achieve what we want for our people. If we want to use our people and keep them home, we'll be the highest losers. Because when I was in Kambe, I would see a 15 years old child who was studying in Kambe and never stayed away from school in Form 5. And you see a 16 year old child marching along 11 February in Form 2. Just imagine. Just imagine what you are doing to a child. And nobody will ever sympathize with you for keeping a child at home. You will never achieve any political goal. So what I'm making you to understand is that there was no threat to my life neither to my driver who is in Douala here as they claim that he's in general hospital but he is not there he's here in Douala you I can invite him tomorrow you come and see him for yourself secondly i have done enough and i believe that people have understood my message and many galajiras have been created so uh, when i sit here i'm happy that testimonies are there from the women in the villages that come to my house every morning to commune with me and thank me Women in the villages that come with their children as testimony. Those have assisted that are forgot. I mean, those things that are forgotten. Children that are assisted and paid their fly, their, 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 their hired vehicles to carry them away from Kambe for treatment. Children that were attacked by these gangs and I had to hire vehicles for them to be treated in big hospitals and forgot about it. And when I sit home in the morning, those were things that were not on camera. When I sit home in the morning and I see eight old women lying up outside with their children that we are coming to thank you. I say, for what? You remember you came to our house already and this child was attacked and he was almost bleeding to death and you sent us, paid our bills in hospital and then sent us to bingo. I said, oh, really? Another one come and give his own testimony. I thought those are the things that makes me happy. All right, we understand from what you've said that it was just a child's play and no, nobody was hurt in the incident. Your driver, you and the other personalities who were with you in the car while you were traveling from Kambe to, to Bamenda are all safe. Now, uh, Kambe today looks like uh, an island in Anglophone Cameroon. Kambe today looks like uh, uh, it's not in Anglophone Cameroon. It's not in what is happening in the rest of Anglophone Cameroon. How have you been able to um, make this happen? Babila, I, I've just uh, made mention of something that maybe you missed the point. I told you that this is not by my power. God may have used me, or God is using me. Because from what is happening, 
I sit on them and I look at it and I say, thank you, God. I don't use force on anybody. You know that. You will see some of my co colleagues elsewhere in the southwest or northwest trying to force people to go to school. No, I don't do that. I just preach peace, love for the community and explain to them the reason why I know that there is an anglophone problem, but the reason why we should seek for the solution in a peaceful manner. Just in a way. And they believe in me. Maybe evident from the things I've been doing to them in the community. But that is a simple truth. We don't have any magic in Kambe. It's just the fact that people have decided to listen to one of their sons who is being inspired or used by God to make sure that they don't live in the, in the bushes. That is why when I go to Kambe, so people will ask me, who is going to pay you for all the risks and what they're doing? I say, no. I've created a lot of Gala Jirat. They will pay me tomorrow. Even if I'm not around, they will pay me tomorrow. Those students going to school will pay me tomorrow. Even if they attack me and do something to me, they will recognize it tomorrow. And the all the old mothers who are not living in the bushes, always thank me. Those are enough uh, 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 the places that I, I, I need, not, not any material. The, the, the risk, like you rightly indicated, is there, but you carried out one of the, I want to say, one of the most successful uh, campaigns that pull crowds in the two Anglophone regions of the country in the midst of the crisis, while others were in Yaoundé, they were unable to go to their localities to campaign, while others uh, simply remain in the urban centers, and many did not even uh, uh, visit the Northwest region during the, uh, the campaigns and the elections, but you were in your uh, constituency campaigning everywhere, moving from Tabeken to uh, Binka and all the villages within your constituency. How uh, did you manage to handle all of these and <coughs> with no problem, nobody attacking you, nobody raising a finger at you and so on, bringing the people from their homes to come and listen to you? You know, I will tell you something what, uh, something an old father to, uh, told me in Kambe, that my son, Galajirat, the Eric Tatos, the Tapang, the Ayabacho, they will need you tomorrow for us to have an, a, a lasting solution to this crisis. Because the method they are using is the right method. I've told you, I, I, that, I, that method? That method is to use, you, you, you have to be intelligent. You use intelligence to achieve political goals. Make your point clear. Like I told you, expressing views as a decisionist is not for me too bad. But using violence and sending innocent children to go and die, thinking that the international community will sympathize with you is a wrong strategy. When you send innocent children, uh, ch uh, children and arm them to go and fight a trained military, when you keep kids at, at home, not to attend school, thinking that you attract sympathy from the international community, that is a wrong strategy. That will never lead us to any victory. It will never help us. That is the message I want them to understand. But if we sit down on the table and bring out all our fit senses, we are going to achieve what we are looking for. The problems will be solved. I will live a happy people. And no life will be lost. And my goal from day one is to make sure that I, we don't lose any life. Be it from the military or my brothers and sisters from the north and the south. When I hear of, of untimely death, Babila will tell you I don't sleep the whole night. Be it an amber boy. Be the, someone who wanted to kill me. I don't feel, I don't feel at ease. I feel the pains. Even if the person was planning to kill me, like those you claim or purported that they wanted to attack me, if I see them killed, I feel the pains more than their parents. That is the person I am. And that is how I believe that we should solve this problem. With peace, we are going to solve it. We cannot get this with violence. Because it, has, it has never happened anywhere in the world. You should look at that. People will tell you that People try to create situations where all mothers will be accidentally killed so that they will prove it out as killing innocent civilians. The international community is too intelligent. They face situations. They know all this. So we shouldn't use this type of tact uh, tactics. They will, they will not help us achieve this goal. We have a problem, yes. None of us have been victims with the Anglophone, uh, being Anglophones. But there is a way to get solutions to this. We should be intelligent. Not what we are doing. It will not help us. We shouldn't send young boys to die. Babila, it will not help us. Yeah. I've told you one time that when I travel from Baminda to Nkambe, if you don't get an attack, the military will never shoot. But sometimes somebody stands in the midst of people and starts shooting at the military. 
And the military, being a human being who wants to protect himself, may want to shoot back at that person and end up killing an innocent civilian. Imagine that situation. And they know what they're doing. That's they want, talking of they want discrimination. They, no, they, let me tell you, you're a human being. You are a human being, and nobody wants to die. And if you are walking here as a military officer, and somebody starts shooting at you, believe me or not, brother, you will react. Because you think that the person may kill you. But accidentally, the bullet may get an innocent civilian. But why was that person shooting at a military officer knowing that he's close to innocent civilians? Because he wants those civilians to be killed and attract sympathy from the international community. But those tactics don't work. The international community is too intelligent for that. They know those tactics. They know it. They know that no military officer will just stand with a weapon, face attack, and stand there looking at the person. That is why I tell them that these tactics are outdated. They never pay. But, but, but those on the ground, Galajera, will tell you that the soldiers sometimes get into places where there was no attack. Maybe an, a separatist fighter ran and passed there, and uh, the military will come and break down I, everything. I, I told you that. And discriminate shooting. My problem with the uh, with the Amber Boys, the bo those in diaspora, is because they are deceiving the young ones who die to attract sympathy and most probably to get money through fundraising for their pockets. Secondly, those who are resisting on the ground may want to use it to do kidnappings and make money. It's a money making issue. Now, when people or Amber Boys come and take Babila's house to plan an attack and kill the military, that house is automatically considered as a weapon to kill the military. No military officer will leave his house in the morning and go burn houses all over the place just for burning sake. They are not mad. I'm not saying that all they are doing is perfect. All right, but I'm uh, telling you that we should shun away from acts that will provoke the military. Not all those in the military are perfect. There are perfect guys, but not all of them are perfect. Some may go outrageous just from the fact that they've seen their colleague being killed. But we could avoid this by not sending those innocent, those young untrained boys to go and attack and kill military officers to provoke situations. Please. All right, Ngalajir, I want you to clear the air on something that has been said in the society. Yes. Is Ngalajir <coughs> into any deal with separatist fighters to keep them at a distance from Kambe, to keep them away from him? Babila, if that, uh, if that were to be the case, I would have, I, I, I would have uh, recommended that type of deal to other communities. If there was a possibility to have a deal with Amber Fighters to make a community safe as Kambe it is, we let it, let's use it all over the Northwest. Why not? Why should it only be in Kambe? I could have recommended it long ago because we are looking for solutions to stop Amber Boys from disturbing the community. I'll be proud to bring out a deal that can stop Amber Boys from attacking people, uh, innocent civilians in Kumbu, from attacking people in, in Bogitunja. You understand? My secret is peace and love for my community. And my community people love me. That is why I stand by them. And the power from God that has you, he has bestowed on me to work for my community and get the result we are getting. You have never given a single franc to any separatist fighter? There is no reason to tell you whether I gave a franc or not. And I will not lie to you. If a separatist fighter has a problem and in his hospital, I will tell you that I will send money to him. There is no reason, no, no reason why I shouldn't. I told you that human being. they are my brothers and they are human beings. They are human I beings. will give the money not to buy weapons, but I will give them money if they tell me and I have proof that he is sick. I will Treat him treatment. and get him well. Even if he's going to come back and attack or want to kill me, I will first of all treat him first. But if he wants to kill me, God will protect me. All right. Galajira, the results are yet to be proclaimed, notably the legislative, uh, the result of the legislative elections. And uh, even though you were alone in your constituency and, of course, you weren't campaigning, the results are yet to be released. And But they are all indications that uh, you're going to be the MP of the Kambe Central Constituency in the next five years after 2013 after a failed attempt in 2013 you have come back this time around with uh, some momentum and you have practically taken already that constituency even though the results are yet to be released when you look at the low participation rate maybe in Kambe 
uh, in the Ndonga Mantum division, the participation rate was a little higher than the rest of Anglophone Cameroon because at least we saw people uh, voting in Kambe. We, we have some figures, even though there are questions mark, question marks uh, on the figure. But when you look at the global uh, participation rate, very low. Do you think, don't you think that there's a problem with legitimacy? Uh, Bapila, let me tell of you something. Those who are going to be voting. Let, vote let me tell you something for you to understand. Even in the far north, we have problems. But in the northwest, where especially in Kambe, the Dongamatung, there was a massive turnout for voters' registration. I will understand in areas where there are a lot of threats, people will shun away from voting. But still, yet, people turn out in all the subdivisions to vote. All the subdivisions. And then, one thing you have to note is that the uh, participatory rate from the presidential election in 2018 almost doubled to that of the municipal and legislative election. That's great improvement. That's great improvement. And I told my people, whether you refuse to vote or you vote, those who are elected will rule you. The mayor who has been elected in Kumbu, in Jakiri, in Kambe, will be the head of that municipality. Whether you voted or not, there is nothing you can do about that. The vote is the highest weapon you can use to change the community. Voting is the highest weapon you can use. You boycott arms or whatever thing will not change anything. Those who are voted into office are the ones that will manage the community, the municipality. And with the powers that have been given to the mayors, I call them mini-ministers, they will do a lot for the community if they are level-headed and being accompanied by the communities. So what I will tell you is that the participation rate was better than the presidential election, which is great improvement, which is showing that people though have started was, to understand. Though it was very low, and the well, people are seeing... Uh, it, 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 it was low, not very low, but it was low, but better than that of the presidential election, meaning that there is great improvement. You should understand. Meaning that there is great improvement. People have started to understand the need for this problem to be solved through peace. All right. The need for the problem to be solved uh, through peace. Gala Gerard elite of the Ndonga Mantum division in the northwest region of the country and is definitely going to be the next parliamentarian of the Ndonga Mantum Central or the Nkambe Central constituency in the northwest region for the next five years. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Babila. And I always have a great pleasure to be on Equinox and pass a message of peace, love and unity to our people. Like I always say, let's unite in love and in peace. Let's shun away from envy and jealousy. That will lead us to great prosperity. Positive thinking. I advocate positive thinking in my community. When you think negative, you spend your time, you waste time spending, spending time through negative things. You are wasting a lot of time. But positive thinking will lead you to success. And will make us to know that within the community, what is happening now in our community is because of a lot of envy happening in all the divisions. That's what leading to the problem that we're having. Seeing people using to settle scores through Amber. A brother will go and report another brother to Amber to seize land and give to him. Those are the things that happen happened in the community. Uh -huh. And the algorithm problem now is put aside. People are now setting scores. That's why I'm advocating for peace to return so that we can sit down on the table and have lasting solutions to our problems. They are our problems. Peace, 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 and peace again. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye.